Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to wrap up today with a special selection which is where one of you tell me exactly what it is I need to check out. Today's comes at us from Spiderland and you're wondering how a top floor could replace heaven by City of Caterpillar. No further context. So let's dive into this, see what uh, City of Caterpillar is bringing to the table today. This is already kind of over all over the place. We had that unsettling intro, the eerie dissonant guitar work, but the really fun ride symbol idea. Nine beat phrases? In three, four? Same exact line, but Paul muted now. A very slight tempo shift for the chorus, I think. The verse is slightly faster. I can't believe it's only been like three minutes. There's so much music left ahead of us and it feels like I've feels like I've been here a while. And I think that's the point of it. It's just super abrasive. This is nice though. I mean it's still eerie, it's still off-putting. Um Disorienting, not off putting. There's still this creeping element to it, like our intro, but we're not dealing as much with dissonance. Definitely building towards something. The 
shifting the snare from rolled elements to a full-on roll. Really nice way to build the intensity on that. Pulling that out for the halftime. Like a little drifting idea going on here. The 3 4 is definitely aiding some of that. The guitar is just sitting on top of all this. <laughs> so I don't know how to feel about this because there's a lot in it that really works for me it, it sits in that indie rock quasi emo realm with raw vocals uh and just a ton of emotion into it all but it also has a lot of dissonance and difficult elements to follow as long as some sections overstaying their welcome and so i think it's best to talk about it in two different modes and that would be the first third of it mixed in with a little bit of the outro and then the middle bridge. Um, it's probably the best way to, to dissect this. 
Um, so what what's going on? Well, and the intro too. Let's start with the intro. The intro is exceptionally unsettling. We have this. Well, I already used the word, jumped the gun a little on it. We have an unsettling atmospheric rumble at the beginning. It's just really low rumbling. I don't know what it was. And it's very unsettling. It puts me in a very tense mindset. And coming off of that, we introduce a bit of drum work that showcases our three, four we're in. A little bit of bass work that quickly gets overshadowed by, or I think the guitars actually come in first. They get overshadowed by the guitars. So I don't remember what the bass was doing in our intro because the guitars were doing what they were doing, which is just nails on a chalkboard dissonance. Uh, I don't know if they could make a more dissonant tone if they wanted to outside of microtonality. And for all I know, they did detune some instruments to achieve the extra grit in the dissonance, the extra tension. It is eerie in all of the horror tropes out there. <clears throat> there is a moodiness to it. There is a discomfort to it. It is unsettling. It is tense. It is not anything positive. There is just absolutely nothing here that could be misconstrued as anything less than terror. And we move out of this into still utilizing some dissonance in the guitar work, but moving ideas in the guitar work, a moving bass line, uh, energetic drumming keeping with the three, four vibe, but giving it, um, uh, sort of, uh, like a nice movement to it. It keeps the song pushing forward, uh, tons of energy. And we have these very emotional, full bodied, but low production, raw vocals on them. They're almost undercooked in a way that it feels like there is some production done to the vocals, but way less than one would normally expect. In fact, the first thing I think most people, most producers would probably say is throw some compression on it. Um, they feel very raw and natural in a way that outside of indie rock, you really don't hear this, this type of, uh, yeah, undercooked production. <laughs> it's missing so many elements that we typically put on vocals in a way that isn't visible. Um, it's, you know, when people say they like uh, people who don't wear makeup and then they'll point to a natural makeup that has like still three and four ingredients or, or products on it. Um, and they're like, yeah, that's the kind of makeup I like. It's very minimal. I'm like there's still a lot of makeup there. You just don't see it. It's all very, it's a natural look, but it's still, you know, using makeup. And the same thing goes for, um, vocals. People say that they want, you know, no effects put on their vocals, but I don't think they really know what that sounds like because what they point to is usually processed vocals. It just, looks more natural. It seems more natural. This is actually really close to raw vocal input. Um, and it's going to be make or break for people. It is. Um, some people might enjoy the atmosphere here. They might enjoy the music, but I think the deal breaker would be like, yeah, I like the music, but not those lyrics or not the vocals. It is uh, definitely an acquired taste. I seem to have that acquired taste already it reminds me of um I, I bring them up all the time but seriously if you go listen to um the the debut album of the used or my chemical romance you'll hear a lot of similar vibes in here the production is a little bit better but it has a lot of the same vocal intonations and ideas and it's still a bit raw especially when you compare it to their more com commercial works like Liars for the Liars for the Used or Black Parade for My Chemical Romance. Um, and so the vocals are a bit rough even for me, but I'm I'm halfway there already. Uh, I think a couple listens to this and I would be fairly, fairly on board with the vocals. 
Um, they are all over the place rhythmically, though. It creates phrasing ideas. Our verse? Can we call it a verse? The first time the vocals come in, uh, we're in four, we're in three four with four bar phrases, which feels natural. But then we go to the next section, which I think is a chorus, but I don't think we revisited it. And we have three bars of three four, which is a nine beat phrase, which feels both. No, it doesn't feel both anything. It's just odd all the time. It's it's so disorienting. It's even by the end of it, I knew what it was. I told y'all, hey, we're in a nine beat phrase. That's weird. I still couldn't get a grasp on it. Every time the phrase repeated, I was like, oh, that's early. Why? Ugh. It's it's just. It fits so much with what's going on, though. The musical atmosphere so far has been. I don't know, vocally full of anguish, passion but musically full of fear and tension, discomfort. Uh, the phrasing of this section being odd in 3-4 is just the icing on the cake. It just fits right in with everything that they're already going for. We come out of it, though, and we return to something like the verse. We still have the bass doing these faster bass ideas. We have the guitars with their slightly dissonant moving ideas. We have the drums... Uh, laying down the time signature, keeping that beat in a... I think I mentioned this earlier, but I don't think I expanded into it. Um, it's sort of like a punky idea. Um, it's very, it's driving. It's got forward momentum. It's got a bit of rhythmic uh, syncopation to it. But it still keeps that uh, waltz bass line to it. Emphasis on beat one. Less emphasis on two and three, and you get that one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, uh, which is what the waltz is based on. And that sort of flowing continues to exist in this song. You get the, the big jump, the one, two, three, one, two, three, one. And it's, it's everywhere in this. I even mentioned the idea of sort of floating at one point towards the end of the song, which was also utilizing this waltz emphasized three, four feel. Um, a lot of the song feels watery to me and I'm not, I'm not going to sugarcoat it and try to spice it up any. I'm sure a lot of that comes from the first times I heard three, four, which in a lot of cases was when I was younger, uh, before I was interested in music and playing video games. And a lot of water themes are in three, four, including, the uh Mario one underwater theme ba bum 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 ba da 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 dum bum 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 that's in three four um I just water in three four feel right to me and then that swaying motion always comes so naturally when I listen to waltz. Uh I don't know if that's also what Koji Kondo and any other composers who associated 3-4 with water did as well. I don't know if it feels the same way to them, but 3-4 is a watery time signature to me. Not always, but especially when you do the waltz feel of emphasizing one and nothing else. Um, where was I going with all this? Oh, we went back to the verse, and then the song kind of died out for a little bit, and we hit the bridge. I'm not keen on the bridge. You guys knew this was coming. It is a ridiculously long slow burn that starts from nothing and takes its time to get up to 10. And we don't even get new layers. It is a volume intensity. It is a volume-based slow burn. There are some changes. Uh, the drums start out a little sparser on the snare, a little heavier on the cymbals. Um, the guitars start out tremolo picking, I think, though, so they don't change up their intensity that way. The drums eventually shift to having this uh, syncopated cadence on the snare, and then eventually getting rid of the ride cymbal altogether. Oh, I forgot, they did have that really cool uh, rhythmic idea on the ride cymbal when we started, 
and that slowly gave way to a rigidity of every quarter note and then it got rid they got rid of it entirely as the snare went into a full on roll just 16th notes of snare with accented uh sometimes uh it was like every 16 beats so bar beat one of every bar give or take i think that was our accent Bass was going, uh, hi-hat was going, probably the pedal, I'm going to assume. Uh, the drums were just getting louder. Bass was just getting louder, but I don't think they were changing up much. It was just like three minutes of rising volume, and there's impact. There's storytelling to that for sure, but dang, was I bored by the end of it. <laughs> it was so slow moving. I, I can't say I understood what the point of it was. And the payoff was to not hit a high point, but to slow the roll down into a modulation that took us into halftime and then letting the halftime fade out as the vocals had, there were two vocal lines going. And the vocals switched between a clean vocal and held a note and worked rasp into it and turned it into a fry scream uh, which is a very cool technique i love when people do it uh, i only know of two examples really one is uh, hand of blood by bullet from a valentine there's a really long note that starts clean and goes fry and uh, as i mentioned earlier burt mccracken of the used does it a lot on their self-title but I love that technique, and I wish more people would do it, because I think it is a great way of adding intensity to a held-out note, which has melodic properties to it. It's one of the things I'm not a big fan of about harsh vocals in general, is the lack of melody. Um, so holding a note out, and allowing that pitch to slowly get replaced by the fry is just such a cool technique that, like I said, I don't really hear too much of. So I was glad to hear it here. But again, we spend all this time building and building and building. And what is the payoff to three minutes of crescendo? Uh, a halftime feel that peters out. Why? It's so anticlimactic. And as usual, I have to give benefit of the doubt here. The benefit of doubt. I think the, I put the in the wrong place. I have to give the benefit of doubt here. They did this on purpose. It's intentional. It's for a reason. I just don't know what it is. On a purely musical level, especially on a casual level, I was not a fan of it. But I think that's because I don't understand what it means. I don't understand why they included it, what it meant to them. I might not know when I hit the lyrics. Wouldn't it be the first time? But this feels like a three-minute song that got stretched out into eight without much meaning behind it. Uh, the, the, I guess that's to say I feel a lot of fluff in the middle. Um, is there anything else I wanted to touch on? I mean, the production was dirty. But I'm I'm hoping that has purpose thematically. I think I hit everything else. Let me hit some lyrics and hopefully have a better take on this. There is not a lot of lyrics here for an eight minute song. We have our verse possibly that gets repeated two other times throughout the track. Um and then what I thought was the chorus, which maybe it was, it's one line over and over and over, laugh yourself red, before we come back to the verse again. Like I mentioned, it's repeated a couple times throughout here. Um, and basically anything not the verse, though, is one line repeated over and over and over and over and over and over and over, which is such an emo thing to do. I'm pretty sure we saw that in Cap and Jazz, and once again... The bands I've already mentioned uh, in this video, they've done this a lot as well. Something that I sort of just associate with the genre. I didn't know what this was about, though, until I saw the annotation. And so that's how I'm going to present this breakdown to you. Um, 
the verse is definitely about uh, taking your time to do important things, uh, not dealing, not doing anything preventative, and waiting until things explode, and then putting on your your best shocked Pikachu face. Uh, it says. Wave your goodbyes with your plastic hands and century-old arctic kisses and not a finger lifts till it all turns to shit and you can act like you're impressed. You slouch now, even further down, as you're wondering how a top floor could replace heaven. We've built it all. We've made our gods locked in ourselves. So, it's about putting... Putting things off until it's catastrophic and then uh, as he says just waving your hands oh, i guess that's it bye everyone <laughs> just that's all folks that's what the verse says every single time it comes up it is the same and then, like i said it's the only section that has words to it other than a, a simple phrase our first chorus just says laugh yourself red and there's a second vocal somewhere that says, I know you choke, which is a line that comes up a lot later. Uh, we have one that says, it's their time. It's still time. You know I'm tired. One that says, an airbag could save my life when my lungs collapse from methane gas of melting ice caps. That gets repeated over and over and over. We go back to the laughing idea. We go back to it's their time. It's still time. We go back to the choking. And finally... We end the track with, if it was airtight, I'd know you choke. And I must have missed the idea of the melting ice caps because everything else is a bit vague, but that is very clear. <laughs> it's about waiting for somebody else to not do anything and then when things explode you're like see i told you and it's getting that last i told you so in there uh with the idea that uh you know i knew you were, you would choke as well we're right there with you and so i don't know why it didn't click with me but the annotation says the song's about global warming and yeah that's right on the money it looks towards the leaders who sit on their hands and do nothing, and when problems actually get real, they're going to be like, who could have seen this coming? And then, uh, I guess all we can do is just point the figure and say, yeah, we did, so look, now you get to die as well. And like, that's not great. But I totally understand the frustration. And so, in that perspective, it's possible that the bridge is the slow progress of global warming. It starts out as nothing but a little buzz, eventually gets bigger and bigger and bigger, but it takes time. It takes a lot of time. And when it's finally an alarm, when it's finally screaming, well, that's the end. We haven't done anything preventative. And so instead of reaching a climax at the end, this would be the moment where human life is no longer sustainable and the song peters out because there's no one left to play it. I think that's what they're aiming for. And in a rare twist, I got something out of the lyrics that explains one of the things in the music that I wasn't too hot on and completely had me shift my perspective on it. It is still boring to listen to. Uh, casually, I, I, I can't say I necessarily enjoy it on a second or third listen, but at least from an artistic angle, critically, uh, I think they did a phenomenal job of incorporating the ideas they were trying to showcase lyrically in the music itself and have the person feel that same 
that same roller coaster of emotions they're on. It's this rising intensity. No one else seems to be doing anything about it. It is filling up inside of you this dissonance, this nails on a chalkboard, just the the want to scream because you know something needs to be done, but you can't. And when people finally start to say, oh, you know, maybe you're right. There's nothing, there's no time left to do anything. And all that's left is the last exhale and saying, well, I knew you choked too. Those are my thoughts. Where's that button? Those are my thoughts on City of Caterpillars and you're wondering how a top floor could replace heaven. What did you think, though? Did you enjoy it? Did anything stand out to you? Is there anything you'd like to add on to my analysis? Any differing perspective on it? Uh, maybe you have something to add on to what I said? I don't know. Put that stuff in the comments. Above the comment section is a description box. In there, you'll find a link to Linktree takes you here you can find a link to my music ways to support the channel a link to the discord server and so much more go ahead and check it out above that if you could like subscribe and ring the bell i greatly appreciate all three of those that wraps it up for today i'll be back tomorrow 5 p.m eastern standard time 9 p.m utc as usual until next time remember to be critical not cynical of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning afternoon or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.